Hi there. Do you know the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Well, today we're going to read Professor Goose Debunks Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Fact check. All right. Well, I'll be plucked and stuffed. This is shocking. Looks like Great Aunt Mother Goose never fact-checked the science in her fairy tales. I cannot sit by and let fairy tales and nursery rhymes misinform millions of readers. Join me, renowned and distinguished Professor Marie Curious Goose, as I debunk this faulty fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a papa bear, a mama bear, and a baby bear who lived in a cottage by the woods. They made porridge for breakfast, but it was too hot to eat, so they went for a walk while it cooled. Really? Bears don't live like us. They have their own natural habitat. Bears don't live in cottages with curtains on the windows. They live in dens. Bears don't eat porridge. Well, maybe if there were honey and nuts and berries on top. Now I'm hungry as a bear. Ha! Professor Goose's fact check. Biologists study life and living things. They tell us that in their natural habitat, some bears make dens under the roots of trees. Others dig into hills or find cozy caves. And some, like polar bears, make dens in snow. Bears usually eat what they find in their habitats. Some of them like human garbage, but it's unhealthy for them. Pandas are the pickiest eaters. Most of them eat only bamboo. A little girl named Goldilocks was lost in the woods when she found the bear's home. She was tired and hungry. The door was unlocked, so she went inside. There's the goose. See, the goose watching and the goose watching. I get lost too, but only in my thoughts. Ha! I could look at the position of the stars and sun to find my way, except that doesn't work on cloudy days. Good thing I have a phone with GPS. Professor Goose's fact check. Satellites that float flight that satellites that float high above the earth send out radio signals that are received by your phone, which will pinpoint where you are and where you're going. This is called GPS or global positioning system. Before the bear family went on their walk, Papa Bear put a big scoop of hot porridge into his big bowl. He put a medium-sized scoop into Mama Bear's medium-sized bowl, and he put a teensy-weensy scoop into Baby Bear's teensy-weensy bowl. Goldilocks was ravenous. She tasted the porridge in the big bowl. Too hot, she said. She tasted the porridge in the medium-sized bowl. Too cold, she said. Then Goldilocks tasted the porridge in the teensy-weensy bowl. Just right, she said, and she gobbled it all up. Sounds like Goldilocks needs to brush up on the laws of thermodynamics. Science tells us that Papa's big bowl would be too hot. Mama's big bowl, medium-sized bowl, would be just right. And Baby's teensy-weensy bowl would be too cold. Porridge sticks to my beak. Yuck. Goldilocks should try my favorite breakfast, a hot chocolate with whipped cream and waffles with maple syrup. See? Too hot. Just right. Too cold. Yum. Professor Goose's fact check. Thermodynamics is a big word for a big idea in science. Its laws explain how heat and energy move through the universe. Porridge, like almost everything else, is made up of many particles that are too small to see with the naked eye. As the porridge cooled, the particles moved fast, cooked. As the porridge cooked, the particles moved faster and faster, increasing thermal energy. Thermodynamics tells us that hot porridge cools down as its thermal energy moves toward the cooler energy around it, cooler air around it. With more particles in the big bowl, there was more thermal energy, so it took longer to cool. If Goldilocks had waited, eventually the porridge in the big, 
the medium size and the teensy weensy bowls would all have become the same temperature as the air. Goldilocks was very tired and needed to sit down. She sat in Papa Bear's chair. Too hard, she said. Next, she sat in Mama Bear's chair. Too soft, she said. And then she sat in Baby Bear's chair. Just right, she said. Crack! The chair broke. Wham! Goldilocks fell to the ground. Ouch! Downward forces can be a pain in the rump. And now poor Baby Bear is without a chair because Goldilocks didn't know how to fix it. If only she'd taken my class, How to Engineer a Chair for a Bear. You can make almost anything from cardboard, except maybe a toothbrush. Professor Goose's Fact Check. Goldilocks broke the chair because she exerted a downward force that was greater than the chair's upward force. In other words, she sat down on a chair that was too small and too flimsy to support her weight. Goldilocks yawned. Upstairs, she discovered three beds. She tried Papa Bear's bed. Too hard, she said. She tried Mama Bear's bed. Too soft, she said. Then she tried Baby Bear's bed. Just right, she said, and Goldilocks fell fast asleep. Yawn, I feel sleepy too. Sometimes I wish geese could hibernate. Every animal, bears and little children and professors, needs sleep. Sleep helps our brain sort out what we've learned and helps us grow healthy bodies. We dream during the deepest part of sleep. I dream of winning the Nobel Prize for revealing the faulty science in fairy tales. Professor Goose's fast fact check. Hibernation is a type of long, very deep sleep. But did you know that bears don't actually hibernate? Some animals, like bats, have a true hibernation where their heartbeats become very slow and they don't wake up when disturbed. Some kinds of bears fall into a different kind of sleep called torpor in winter. They can sleep for more than a hundred days without eating, drinking, or going to the bathroom, but they can wake easily from torpor if hurt or threatened. Mama bears even have babies and then fall asleep again. P.S. The babies sleep happily until spring, too. When the three bears came home, they were surprised to find that things were not as they left them. Somebody ate our porridge, said Papa Bear. Somebody sat in our chairs, said Mama Bear. Somebody broke my chair, said Baby Bear. But who? Fabulous. Baby Bear might be a budding scientist. I think she's about to use the scientific method to solve the mystery. Professor Goose's Fact Check. The scientific method is a set of steps that scientists and many others use to test their ideas. It starts with an observation and a question. To answer that question, they make a hypothesis, which is a good guess about what causes something to happen. They test their hypothesis and collect and record information called data. Then they come to a conclusion and share what they have learned with others. Baby Bear observed the following. Some porridge was missing from her parents' bowls, and her bowl was empty. There was a long, curly, blonde hair in the empty bowl. Papa's and Mama's chairs had been moved, and hers was completely destroyed. And a trail of muddy footprints went up the stairs to the bedroom. She said, I hypothesize that we have a hungry, blonde human who came in from the woods, who is bigger and heavier than me, but not as big as either of you. Is it still here? asked Mama Bear. I predict that it is somewhere in the house, probably upstairs, said Baby Bear, pointing to the muddy footprints. They crept into the bedroom. There it is, cried Baby Bear. Goldilocks woke with a start. She took one look at the bears, then leaped out of bed and escaped through the window. Don't go, cried Baby Bear, but Goldilocks was already far away. Yikes! Good thing she landed in that bush. I sure hope it wasn't poison ivy. Goldilocks must have been really scared, which triggered a typical fight or flight Excuse me, a typical flight or fight, fight or flight response. Professor Goose's fact check. 
When we are frightened, our brains try to protect us with a flight or fight or flight response. If we sense danger, like what happens when we face a scary animal, our brain sends a message to our muscles to tense up so we can fight off the danger or take flight and escape. That's where the story usually ends, but based on my observations of the bear family, I propose another conclusion. Papa Bear rubbed his growling tummy and said, If that little girl ever comes back, she had better bring some berries. <laughs> Mama Bear made a sign for the front door. Please knock before entering. And Baby Bear designed and built himself a brand new chair. Turn the page to find out how you can engineer a chair for a bear. How to engineer a chair for a bear. And I'm going to pull this in a little closer and pause so you can see it. Calling all budding engineers, you can make a chair. And if you pause on this, you can see how it works. And it's made with three square pieces of cardboard, about nine inches on each side, four empty toilet paper rolls, one cardboard egg carton, some scrap paper or newsprint, craft glue, tape, two craft or popsicle sticks, a sharp knife or scissors, make the seat of the chair, and then it goes on and you build the legs. And then build the back. And then once the glue dries, congratulations, you've designed a chair. Now you're ready to invite a bear to lunch, but don't give her porridge. That was Professor Goose debunks Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And I hope you enjoy that and that you subscribe and come back often. And we'll see you next time on Stories with Grandma.